we're going to be cutting some white oak logs. These are some 14 foot white oak logs we got. We're going to be cutting them into uh, sideboards on dump trucks. They're going to be two and a half inch thick by 10 inches tall. And then they're going to be the 14 foot long. Um, so I'm going to set these up. Got one on the mill already. Uh, we're going to take you over here and I'm going to show you how I cut the logs and show you kind of what my thoughts are when I'm going through cutting them. So one thing I always do is I always make sure I have the small and the log on this side of the sawmill. Um, that kind of just, it gives me, it, the small and the log's gonna be right here the whole time. I'm gonna be seeing this side of the log the whole time when I'm cutting. Um, I'm, it's right here. I'm gonna be able to know what I'm gonna be able to get out of the log when I'm making cuts, uh, when I'm squaring it up. This is a small end of the log. There's more wood on the big end. So if I can get the, if I can get what I need out of this side, this it should always be down there no matter what unless there's a big unless there's something wrong with the log but yeah as long as you have it level we got the tow boards this one's up just a little bit uh this end has more of a taper on it small end of the log so we got it raised up just a little bit to compensate for that make this first first cut on the log it's going to be nice and straight uh it probably will have a little bit more on the on the big end of the log, but that's that's how we want it. So, but yeah, this log is they're about 14 foot six, and then as you can see it's about 14 and a half that way, and about 15 that way, and then come down here on the small end of the log or the big end of the log. This way is going to be about. 16 by 18. All right, so some of the thoughts that's running through my head is just when I'm putting the log on here. The only thing really, that little knot right there, and I wouldn't care if it's on the top of the log right now, if it was on the side like it is, the bottom, the other side, that doesn't necessarily matter too much to me. That's the only really defect of this log. There's a knot right there, but that's not really gonna make any bit of a difference. The only thing, and that knot for what I'm doing is not gonna make any difference to the lumber. Um, the only thing I wanna do is make sure it's either on the top, the bottom, or the side. I don't really want it at an angle coming out like here. I wanna just be able to cut the cut the cut it off by when I'm squaring with the log. I want it to be either on the top side, not in the middle. Alright, so the next thing, um, bring the head of the mill down. What I do when I'm cutting long logs is I, when the log is gonna be close, so if this log is, let's, let's see what it was again. That's about 14 and a half. So I'm cutting 10 inch wide boards. So I have some room to play with, but not a whole ton. And when I'm cutting logs that are close to the final dimension that I'm needing, what I do is I usually take off the very littlest bit I can. Um, I'll take that cut off and then I'll usually drop down another inch or three quarters or whatever. Just kind of depends on the size of the log and how much I have to play with. But I want to know what what for sure I can get out of this log before I start cutting, taking off too much. Or If I take off too much, then I mean, I'm kind of screwed for the rest of the log. I just kind of wasted this log as far as getting the lumber that I was planning on getting out of it. So I kind of take off a very little little bit when I'm cutting these long logs because it's kind of hard to square it up sometimes and get it perfect um, as far as um, taking off just a little, as far as having the log uh, leveled up perfect for this, this, this first cut and then roll it 90 degrees and make that second cut. Once I have a square edge on it and it's laying flat on the bed of the sawmill, uh, then I kind of know what I can get out of it for sure and then I can come oh I can always come back and turn it uh, cut up more off of this side so kind of leave the blade there we're gonna make this first cut and we're gonna turn it 90 degrees and go from there
All right, guys, so we made our first two cuts. This is our bark slab down here. That's the stuff we bundle up and sell for firewood. This is our second here. When I'm cutting a bunch of logs, what I do is I take all the seconds and we just set them off to the side while I'm cutting all the lumber. And at the very end, um, once we're done cutting the lumber, we just throw all the seconds back on there. And then we'll get, we'll see here. Um, we'll be able to get a good six inch board, a clean, good six inch board out of that for sure. Um, oh yeah. Well, I have the log sitting like this. This is not going to be wide enough to get our 10 inch. This is 10 inch wide deck board that, I mean, I'm not going to be able to get anything out of that for what I'm needing it other than just an off ball second. Um, so I have the log sitting like here instead of making our four cuts and having to come back to this side again to take off that board. We just, uh, we just cut it, cut it now while we have it sitting here. Uh, speeds up the process a lot. So that's pretty much what I do most of the time is I make that first bark cut, uh, take that one off and then I'll drop down an inch or three quarters. Just kind of depends on what the log is. And we'll take off that one and then we'll turn it 90 degrees and go from there. So when I'm determining where I'm going to set uh, the blade height for the second cut, after we turn it 90 degrees, I just kind of eye it up back here, really. Um, ideally, I just want to be right below the line, the bark line. Uh, I'd rather be too high than too low. Again, it's a lot harder to put the wood back on the log than it is to make another cut to take a little bit more off. Um, that's what it's going to look like on that side. You can see we got our knot up on the top side of the log. The blade's going to go underneath of that. And it's going to take all that off. Alright, so we'll get it fired up and we'll make this cut. So we took the second the bark cut off. Uh, as you can see, it's nice and squared up, pretty well all the way down. We got a little bit of bark left right here, but it's nothing bad. Um, I'm just going to leave that as it is for now. Uh, we're going to turn it 90 degrees, and this third and fourth cut is when you have to start doing some math on figuring out uh, on figuring out where where you need to make your cuts, where you need to set the blade when you're making the cut. That's kind of for it all to come out even, the third and fourth cut are really the most important ones as far as getting everything to work out perfect in the end. So we will turn it 90 degrees here and we will see what we got. So we got our blade set, we got the log turned, we got our blade set there. Um, we come up here, this is our scale. This is what the log is ended up gonna be. We're gonna set it right at 10. It worked out perfect. Uh, so it should work out just, just fine. We're gonna make that cut and then we're gonna turn it 90 degrees again and then we're 
we're just gonna cut through it two and a half inches thick. So we'll make this cut. Um, also, another thing very important with this third and fourth cut is if you're using your toe boards, you gotta make sure you let them down. Because if you leave them up and, or when you turn this log and you had it up for the first and second cut, or the first or just the second or whatever, and you turn it over to your third cut and now you got a square side that's gonna be laying down on the sawmill bed and you leave your toe board up, um, that's bad news. This is gonna be tapered to whatever, to however how much you had that toe board up. So when I first started not having toe boards at all on the first, first sawmill to this one, getting all excited to use them and then you just get all excited cutting and then you don't even think about it. And it's pretty sad when you realize <laughs> that you've left the toe boards up. So now I've been doing this for a while. We got a lot of hours on the sawmill. So it's just kind of a habit to make sure I always look uh, now. So hasn't been a big issue. Sometimes if I'm cutting for someone, I get not for someone, but uh, if I just get excited, but leave them up every once in a while. But Mostly just in a big rush, not really excited, but when I'm in a big rush, I'm cutting. So, but yeah. Alright, so we'll start it up and we'll make this third cut. So we made the third cut now, we're going to be turning the log over. Uh, one thing after you get a good, you get kind of used to the sawmill. Uh, using the clamp to turn the logs, not having to use the actual log turner with every time, it saves a bunch of time. That little log clamp becomes like a, almost like a third, like a third arm. Uh, you can use it for so many different things to speed up the process. The log, the log turner, it works really good for turning big logs and I use it a lot. But when you have smaller logs like this and especially when, after you got a third or a flat side on it already, you can really, you can really use it to turn the logs and you can be really finesse with it, I guess. You can, you can make final little tweaks with it. Um, it doesn't damage the side of the log. If you got a straight edge on the one side already and you're turning it with the log clamp it's it usually digs into the log pretty good and with that clamp you can really you can really just finesse stuff with it. Uh, it works really good it doesn't tear up the log it works good so all right so now we got the log turned um we're gonna be coming down here scoot the sawmill up to the log and we're gonna see what we can get out of it. All right, so we got a blade height set for this all to work out. Like I said earlier, we're gonna be cutting in two and a half inch thick boards. Uh, so that works out to be 10 and 3 eighths inch thick. Our 10 and 3 eighths is where we're gonna set our blade for everything to come out straight. We're gonna have a little bit of bark on this, on this first board and most likely a little bit of bark on our last board. But there's going to be enough meat on this other back side. Um, this side of the board can be put on the inside of the dump truck where you won't ever see it. Uh, it won't make too much of a difference. So, And then we're going to come back here. We're going to set our simple set. 
So we're gonna come here to manual. We're gonna, this is our, our hand is our manual mode. And then this is our simple set here. So we're gonna press this simple set button. And these are our settings. We got two different settings. So one's at two and an eighth and one's at one and an eighth ready. So we're gonna come up here two and an eighth because that's the one closest. We're gonna arrow up. We're gonna come to, there's two and a half. We're gonna come an inch or an eighth of an inch past to two and five eighths of an inch. Um, because our blade takes out an eighth inch kerf with each cut, so you have to set it an eighth of an inch over the dimension that you're wanting in the end. So we got it set at two and five eighths of an inch. Uh, and everything's gonna work out just perfect. All these boards here are gonna, all gonna be two and a half inch exactly by 10 inch wide, and then it will be 14 foot long. So we'll get set up here and watch, let you watch cutting our.
right, guys, so here's the four, two and a half inch thick, 10 inch wide and 14 foot long uh, wide oak dump truck sideboards we got. As you can see this one here is the top one, has the top outside edge, has a little bit of a, some bark on this one end. Um, we'll just put that side on the inside of the dump truck bed and you won't ever see it and it won't make any difference at all. So but yeah, as you can see here, 10 inches wide, two and a half inch thick. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked that video. Um, if you do like that video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll be sure to answer them. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.